Hello YouTube, welcome to this new hypertrophy series where I'm going to talk to you about the issues of training with only intensity and no volume. I made the counterpart of that video roughly three months ago about doing only volume with no intensity uh, and this is the uh, fi uh, final uh, installment of that discussion because a lot of people ask me that. And I think it's a very valid question. People wonder, hey, how come I can't just do high reps? Or, hey, how come I can't just do one rep maxes? It's what I like. I'm not going to tell you not to do one rep maxes. If you like them, do them. But the type of programs that, that are tailored towards uh, very low reps have a lot of issues. The number one issue that is clear as day is doing a very small amount of reps is not conducive to tonnage growth. It's very hard to grow your tonnage if you only give yourself three reps to grow it, even if you multiply the sets, because you're going to end up uh, trapped in a sense. Whether you're going to do a three rep max that is an actual three rep max that's going to tire you out, and in that case, you have minimal tonnage, albeit at a very high intensity, or you're going to do a ton of sets with three reps but you also understand that if you're able to replicate the strength and you're able to go back to baseline every time to get the three reps, that's not a real high intensity training. You're just repeating something that is easy for your body to do again, again, and again, because you like the low reps. So now the intensity is high, quote unquote, because of the rep range you force yourself in. But the truth is you could be repping that weight for much more. So why aren't you doing that? That's the issue here. A lot of people who say they train high intensity end up with either one of these results, either low tonnage, high quality or high tonnage, low quality. And you want neither of that. You want to have a combination of both. So that's one thing. That's one reason why high intensity training is not the greatest for hypertrophy. Another one is that that type of training tends to be very minimalist. And there are a plethora of issues with minimalist training. It's uh, very conducive to injury because you are going to work the, uh, the joint in a single angle all the time. There's no issue with working the angle and loading the, the, uh, the joint with heavy weight. But if you do it all the time the same way, eventually you're going to get overuse injuries. And by the same token, you're going to work the same muscles again, again and again. That's if, and again, it's two thoughts. That's if you apply what some people do when they do powerlifting training, where they're going to stick with the big three and some variations of the big three, and they're going to repeat them ad nauseum. That's option number one. If you do powerlifting, all the more power to you. But here we're talking bodybuilding and how to get big. So that is not good. The other version of high intensity training that I see people do is they're going to have a super high uh, exercise selection to combat the overuse injury. So they're going to rotate their lifts all the time. I made the videos about it. This is not a conducive way to promote hypertrophy because you're not staying specific enough for the most part and you are relearning the lift too often. You're not reusing the muscle fibers. You are not really promoting muscular fatigue. And that is also going to lead to poor results in terms of hypertrophy. So that is the issue with doing only intensity and being super focused on that as someone who is not necessarily a strength athlete. And I can tell you also that a lot of powerlifters, a lot of strongmen will also tell you that only doing low reps for high intensity is not the best way to get strong past a certain point. These guys also do reps. They also do quote unquote hypertrophy work. This is the reason why powerlifters, only lifters have hypertrophy blocks is because eventually to drive strength, you have to drive the amount of muscle fiber and the size of them that you have in your body. But I personally don't worry too much about that because I only care about size. That being said, if you think a little bit, you'll also realize that the reverse also applies for bodybuilders. This is also why bodybuilders need to take care of their strength. They need to grow their strength because it promotes progression and progressive overload and weight on the bar. So what is the solution? Just like with the video about high volume only, where I give a solution. Well, the solution with high intensity is, yes, you can do high intensity. And in my opinion, it is something that you should be doing. 
but you need to do it in a strength work fashion and it shouldn't make up the vast majority of the program. It should be something that opens up the day, that primes you up, and then you make up the rest of the tonnage with variation accessory lifts that are going to take place in higher rep ranges, still in relevant intensity windows, but nothing too low. And uh, this is something that across the board is going to be repeated in your program. Of course, it doesn't need to follow that template all the time, but the idea is you need to offer yourself a diversity of rep ranges that are going to represent a diversity of volumes and intensity. Again, as I said with the three rep uh, example, there is no point in having different prep ranges if they are all going to represent the same volume and intensity. It's possible to do so if you want it. You could have from one to three reps and from, I don't know, 15 to 20 reps and have them at the same intensity. It would be stupid, but it's possible. We don't want that. Rep ranges are going to represent volumes and intensity that are going to be directly correlated with you, with your strength, with your RPE, with your intensity, and they need to stay that way. They, are, they will never be uh, fully, uh, in a sense, customized towards everyone. An 8 to 12 rep range doesn't represent anything in reality, in terms of intensity. Because if you don't push yourself, then you, can, you could be doing these in completely different uh, windows of intensity and they will not be relevant anymore. This is also why I promote leaving a rep in the tank. I promote uh, pushing yourself to a point, but that's just my uh, philosophy on this channel. So this wraps up the video about why you shouldn't be doing only high intensity stuff in your training. If you want to learn more, you can also check the hypertrophy series playlist. Thank you for watching and have a good day.